Welcome back to another video. My name is Bruce and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this fly fishing fly lure box. This particular one is made out of zebra wood with some maple splines. It has a maple back and it has clear acrylic that I engraved the podcast logo of Matt Whitman. He's part of the No Dumb Questions podcast and I'm a huge fan of their podcast. So I'm actually going to be sending this to him and uh, he does that podcast with Destin Sandlin from Smarter Every Day and it's fantastic. I recommend you listen to it. Uh, I'll link his YouTube channel below also, but let me show you how I made this. To start this project off, I jumped into a design program. I'm using Infinity Designer and I just laid out a simple design with the No Dumb Questions logo, making sure to flip it horizontally because when it engraves, I wanted it to show properly on the backside. If you're interested in seeing more about how I laid out that design, leave me a comment below. Maybe that's something I can do in the future. I was sent these Trusted Crayon markers to try out and I used them on this piece on my rough stock to lay it out. It works really well, it marks on multiple surfaces, so I'll have a link below if you want to check them out. I started breaking down materials by using my track saw. I laid out the piece, cut it off, and then proceeded to kind of resaw some different pieces at the bandsaw. In between each time I made a bandsaw cut, I would take it over to the joiner, and then I would go ahead and clean it back up. Then I would resaw again and repeat. I kept doing this until I had all of my box pieces and then was careful to mark them out. Next, I cleaned everything up on the drum sander and got it all to the exact same dimension. Then I just made sure that each piece was exactly the same width. I had left a little extra on there and I cleaned that up at the table saw. Then I put a dado into each of the side box pieces. This will later accept the acrylic top as well as the maple bottom. Speaking of maple, I had a really blonde piece of maple and so I just squared it up and then marked a line on the center, resawed that because I wanted a pretty thin bottom and that ended up working out perfectly. I was able to use the other part later on that you'll see as the splines. I pulled out my spline jig and started cutting the 45s on the box pieces. I had the measurement of the first one that I would establish and then for most of the others I used referential measurements. So I would put it back up to the backer piece that I knew I wanted to use and that was my overall size. And then I would go ahead and cut the 45s on the rest of them, setting up a stop block to make sure I could get the other side exactly the same. Next up, time for some laser engraving. I'm using my Glowforge laser engraver for this, and if you want more information about that, I'll have a link down in the description below. Now it was time to glue everything together. I just went very sparingly on the glue because I didn't want any squeeze out to clean up on the inside of the box. I could go ahead and put the acrylic in and the backer piece of maple in. That way everything would line up right and I just used a band clamp to glue it all together. 
As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using some of this really blonde maple as splines in the corners. And I made this spline jig based on one that David Picciuto made years ago. I'll have a link below to his video and you can see exactly how to make it. I got the spline material really close to the thickness I needed. Then I cut out each strip at the bandsaw and finessed them by hand on some sandpaper until I got the perfect fit in each of the slots. At this point, I have this box all glued up. It is a single piece, and uh, I'm going to cut the splines off, and then I'm going to take it to the table saw and cut the lid off. I made it all one piece so that the grain would match, and then when I cut the lid off, it'll be perfect. So, let's do that. Well, that was nerve wracking. <laughs> Cutting that box apart on the tail saw, it was just scary because I kept thinking it was I was gonna slip and like mess up this box I spent all this time on, but it turned out pretty good. I'm gonna have a little bit of flattening to do um, just from, you know, variations and I guess how I held it. But I think overall, that went pretty well. been sanding this on this granite plate for a while now. I've got a really good fit, so check this out. It's fitting really well all the way around. Got that continuous grain, and now I'm going to work on putting the hinges here. I'm gonna actually inset them in here so that they'll have a nice flush look when this box is closed. Now what I'm doing is just gluing in with some CA glue. I use this uh, Starbond Thick, I like that stuff, and then some Accelerator. I've actually got a link below to this if you want a um, little bit of a discount. Use my coupon code Bruce A. Ulrich and you'll save a little bit when you check out. But I'll just put a drop of this down in here 
And this one I actually messed up, so I've got room for two magnets. No big deal. But I'll just take two of these jokers, kind of wipe it like that, and get glue absolutely everywhere is apparently the idea. Let's try this again. In here like this and wipe. If we put them in like this, we actually want to put them in like this for the lid so that they have the attraction of the ones below. Just not pleased with how it was coming out. So I picked up some of this EVA foam from Harbor Freight and I'm going to take one of them, cut a couple pieces, glue them together with some contact cement. So now they should be good to go to put on top of each other and they will bond to each other. And I will do that like this. And I'm gonna try to put some even pressure on it with a board and then put a bunch of weight on it. I'm just gonna use a couple paint cans. So I'm not quite sure how big to do these slots for the flies. So I think I might do three quarter inch. Yeah, that should be good. I was trying to find a good way to solve the problem of how to cut the slits in the foam that will accept the hooks from the fly lures. And so I think what I'm gonna do is just get a, a board that has a straight edge, clamp it on each row and just use that like a guide to press the saw up against. And that way it will kind of guide the saw straight and I can plunge down the amount that I need to, unclamp it, move down and keep going. I am really pleased with how that turned out. I'm so glad I went, took the time to source some different foam. All right, moment of truth. Hopefully this works. I want a nice snug fit, but not too snug. Oh yeah. I am really pleased with the fit on this. It um, came out really nice. Uh, the foam's not perfect, but I'm quite pleased with this foam versus the black foam that I started with. All right, to finish this box, I'm going to use Odie's oil. I've been using this recently. I like the stuff. Really simple application. Just use a white Scotch-Brite pad and kind of buff it in and let it sit for a little bit. Come back, wipe all the excess off, and you're good. I've let this finish sit on here for 30 or 40 minutes, which is what's recommended. And now I'm just going to buff off any of the excess and let it sit probably overnight for the rest of it to have a, a chance to cure. All right, I'm almost done with this fly box. Uh, all I've got to do is put the foam down inside the box. I think to do that, I'm just going to use a little bit of CA glue. It's got a really nice tight friction fit, so it may not even need that, but I think just a few dabs here on the bottom will secure it in place quite well.
Yeah, I'm really excited how this turned out. I can't wait to hear what Matt thinks about it. Again, if you don't listen to the No Dumb Questions podcast, I recommend that you do. I'll link it below, but it's a fantastic podcast. They cover all kinds of topics on there, and I'm just a big fan. The zebra wood was interesting to work with. I've not done much with that before this. I'd love to know what you think about it. Would you have used something different for the foam on the inside, or would you have gone about maybe the hinges in a different way? Leave me a comment below. If you feel like I earned it, Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next video.